Hi guys, I'm FPL Nymphria and welcome back to the home of FPL videos. Here's a summary of how I got on with my second wildcard of the season with some surprising results. Would you believe my luck with my goalkeepers this season? I started the season with Ryan. When he went off a cliff I went to Pope, who was doing okay before I got him and then became a mixed bag. So I sell him for McCarthy. Pope goes wild and McCarthy slowly falls off of a cliff. So I move back to Pope, who's been in form and McCarthy pulls out a penalty save. You couldn't write it or believe it. I seriously considered whether to sell McCarthy as my backup goalkeeper. He stayed in my team all the way until the end of the week where I was told that he was likely to lose his spot because of recent form. So I plumped for Cruel. Both my new goalkeepers managed just two points between them in a week of goalkeepers doing well. So that was incredibly unfortunate. Trent was the only player to keep his place in my back line and the only one of my defenders not to return any real points. He had two key passes and created one big chance but could only manage two points for me. Bulldog's position was one of the most debated in my team. I was tempted to go with Aurea here as Spurs have a fixture in game week 31 but he didn't play so that worked out okay. I also looked at Ward from Palace as he also plays in 31. That would have worked out well but he has Liverpool in 31 so that put me off. So I was then down to blank game week players as options and the Cells versus Sheffield lads was the options I had available. Both would have been fine as both got clean sheets. Six points from Baldock, who I settled on, was added to my team total. Doherty was the first name on my team sheet. Wolves were disappointing in attack and as a result Doherty could only manage the clean sheet for six points. I'll take that though. In midfield, the only player that survived my wildcard was Salah. He managed a goal and two bonus points from his two shots on target and three key passes for a total total of 9 points. It is now known that Salah was the right captain choice this week, so well done for those of you who did that. But at this point I can't go any further without mentioning the postponement of the Arsenal and Manchester City match due to the coronavirus and the impact that it has had on my game. First of all, health comes first. I really want to stress that here. It's been tough to take this knock and it's likely ended my chance of any comeback in FPL, but whilst FPL is very important to me and to my NIM fam, our health comes first and we have to trust the officials are doing all they can to keep people safe. So what impact has it had on my team? Well, the postponement has rendered most of my wildcard pretty useless and you will see why as we approach my attacking line. Saka came in for Snodgrass to chase the doubles. Saka got three points from his clean sheet against West Ham. I held on to KDB despite his injury, hoping he might get some game time. Him missing the first match and now with the the second match called off, I was left with Saar off of my bench with just two points. Lastly, I was set to keep Bruno but did flirt with the idea of chasing the double with Mares. This was a big risk and I had Bruno in my team until the last second when I decided to take the punt given my rank. I hit the button on Mares and the game told me it was updating and I was no longer able to make any changes. Okay, I thought, I don't mind keeping Bruno, I'm feeling pretty zen with that. However, when I signed back in, I was a little shocked to see Mares staring right back at me. Oh hello, I thought. Wasn't expecting this. Hopefully it turns out okay. Unfortunately, he didn't start the Arsenal match, only coming on with a one-point cameo, and that remains the only points I have from him now that the second game has been cancelled. Moving on to my forwards, Jimmy survived the cut. Three shots off target and one shot on target only resulted in two points for me, unfortunately. I moved Ings to Yotta. I was debating Dini or Calvert Lewin here. However, I decided to side with a player who currently has a game week 31 fixture. But as it was, all of them got two points. So it will remain to be seen who was the better option going forward. Alba was brought in for Nacho and the captaincy armband was placed on him. He did blank against West Ham, only creating one big chance and getting two points doubled to four as my captain. Unfortunately, that's now how it will remain. All of that means I got just 39 points this week. Well, well below the average, leaving me now on an ever decreasing OR, my ninth red arrow in a row. There was nothing I could have done any better here with the bench I had, it's just been horrid luck once again. However, looking back on it now, not wildcarding would have been the more sensible thing. Moving forward, there has been a lot of talk now on how COVID will affect the rest of this season. To be honest, the short answer is nobody knows. Likely
likely outcomes are more postponed matches that could be replayed in the summer or a complete early end to the season in worst case scenario. As I mentioned earlier, health leads all and we as FPL managers and myself as a content creator will now have to take the season week by week. This is not a season that will befriend those who plan for more than a few weeks ahead. That has already been proven. With that, here's how I'm looking ahead to game week 30 and this is how I'm currently shaping up. I have decided to play cruel against Southampton, lord knows why. I know that that's a problem waiting to happen. I've stuck with the same back three as game week 29. Baldock was brought in to play until the blank where I will reassess. Trent has some making up to do and I'm praying Wolves have a better game against West Ham. Although West Ham are now looking like they have their shizzled together so that likely won't be as much of a pushover as it once might have been. Just hoping Doherty can continue to do me proud now after buying him so hopefully he can get a little something this week. Mares has already been sold on for Bruno as soon as the derby was over. This was a big risk to move early but Mares was a one week punt and I didn't want to miss out on price rises. I'm always happy to recorrect my mistake as quickly as I can and I will now keep Bruno as long as fitness and form allows. He has a blanked 31 bench spot in my team barring any unforeseeable circumstances of which there have been a lot this season. KDB is now a question mark injury news is much needed on him I'll have to wait on that before deciding what to do Sal gets his first start in my team I really hope that Watford game against Liverpool wasn't just a one-off hoping he can do a little magic against Leicester then I'm lining up the same front three as last week we will have to keep a close eye on whether Arsenal will now play Brighton at the moment that match is still on I believe but I would stay flexible here and have a backup plan of what you can do with Arsenal and Brighton players if that match is called off. Whether that's bench order or transfers, whatever, but just stay flexible there. Again, my team looks somewhat great on paper. This is the story of my season, but has continued to disappoint with any substance when we get into the game weeks. This season looks to be a season unlike any other. While skill will still play a part here, being on the right side of luck through all of this is likely to have a big impact on whether you finish strongly or not. Unfortunately so far I've been on the bad side of that luck, hopefully that will change soon. My captaincy is between Salah, Aubameyang and Fernandez this week. At the moment I think given the Arsenal situation and with Salah's midweek match I may side on form with Bruno. And lastly moving on to the trending transfers this week let's take a look at how things could develop ahead of game week 30. Of the goalkeepers Pope continues to be the most transferred in with over 23,000 purchases. Henderson is the next trendiest goalkeeper in this week with over 18,000 managers snapping him up. Alisson's hip injury has seen him be sold on by over 43,000 managers already ahead of game week 30 and Ryan is the second most transferred out goalkeeper but nowhere near as close with just over 8,000 sales. With Alisson out we have seen a knock on in defence with Robertson being sold on by over 51,000 managers. Chilwell who missed last game week because of injury is next most transferred out with over 25,000 sales. Doherty is the trendiest defender in this week with over 40,000 managers getting on board the Wolves man. Lord Lundstrom was back with a bang against Norwich and has been rewarded with a surge in purchases from FPL managers as 35 plus thousand managers jump on board again. In midfield the United men have seen a flurry of action as managers flock to pick up United attackers. Fernandez has been bought by over 128,000 of you and Martial is picking up pace at his slightly cheaper budget of 7.9 mil as 68 plus thousand managers get on board. Kevin De Bruyne's injury and all of the uncertainty with postponements has seen him the most sold midfielder this week with 110 plus thousand managers selling on the reliable City man. Bergwijn, Grealish and Traore are fighting it out as over 40,000 managers get off the midfielders. It's close as to who will take the second most transferred out spot though. Up front managers have lost patience with Ings as 67,000 managers sell on the Southampton man. Abraham's injury has seen him the second most transferred out with over 53,000 sales. It's no surprise that managers are switching back to Vardy after his brace as we see over 61,000 managers pick up the Leicester man. Jimenez and Jota are close behind though as Jota has been bought by over 45 plus thousand managers and Jimenez by 52 plus thousand managers. I've also added a new feature to my videos this week called my transfer radar pick. This will feature a player I think is being overlooked by the community to move in 
in or out of our FPL teams. This week, my transfer radar spotlight is on Golonzo. It was close between William, Pedro and Alonso this week, but just because of the sheer game time, I have leaned towards Alonso. Owned by only 3.9% of the community and with only just over 24,000 purchases this week, he himself is not guaranteed a start in Frank's liner. But with three goals in three games, a clean sheet and a long-suffering Aston Villa side up next, I think he could be worth a punt for those of you looking to get off expensive Liverpool assets for a short period of time and take some risks. And that's it you guys, thanks for watching. Please feel free to check out my sponsors FancyFootballFix.com and before you go please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We will get through this NIMFAM, we just have to take it week by week and take care of ourselves and our families. Until next time, NIMFRIA out.